is only one thing that could make me say or do anything pro-Trump, and that is all of the precious snowflakes who find it so offensive that people write chalk messages on the ground. They have to whine and cry about it on a national level. So, in the name of free speech, Ben, who wins this fight? Well, America loses. I mean, the, the, to, to, call this, to call this election cycle a dumpster fire is far too cruel to dumpster fires, which at least destroy garbage rather than making them precedent. I mean, the problem here is that every attack that Hillary leverages against, against Trump on his lack of foreign policy knowledge, experience, and basic common sense can be doubly true of her. I mean, watch list, but the Democrats don't get to run the chamber just because they're sitting there on their fat cans, unable to get up. I'm sorry, but this is not how the, the process works. It's hilarious to me that when Barack Obama controlled both chambers of Congress. He didn't bring any of these gun control bills forward. Now that they're in the minority, they want to run on these issues, so they're going to sit there and they're going to pretend that they're doing something noble by not getting up. I mean, my, my working theory is that they actually can't get up. I mean, they're all over the age of 80, apparently. I mean, as far as personality types, and when you say there are two different types of personality, I think that's kind of both of them. I think that, that Donald Trump <laughs> has the personality of the, the drunk uncle who doesn't drink, and Hillary Clinton is, is more robotic than anybody in the history of presidential politics. I mean, you can almost hear the beeps and the boops emanating from her mouth every time she talks. The reality of the situation is that the economy grows because people engage in consensual transactions and people invent new things in order to engage in more of those consensual transactions. That's not an impoverishing thing. The truth is that socialism is the most selfish philosophy on planet Earth because it is based on the, the essential concept that I am breathing, therefore I deserve. Capitalism is in essence forced altruism because if I don't give you something that you want, then I will starve. If I don't give you something that you want, then I will starve because it is based on consent, whereas socialism is based inherently on force. This election pits two of the most unpopular people in the country against each other. Hillary Clinton, who is a lifelong corrupt criminal, a pathetically self-serving, ambitious, vile, rapist defender, a congenital liar, a felon, who despises founding principles and traditional notions of decency, against Donald Trump, who's an arrogant, a-religious, anti-constitutional, ignorant, big government, ad hoc panderer, who gave Hillary money. And this is how the Occupy Wall Street movement thinks. This is a group of people who graduated with the de degrees in lesbian dance theory and then were surprised when they didn't get a six-figure paycheck out of college. I mean, this is, uh, unfortunately, they were getting a paycheck consummate with their education level. The, the problem is that if you have to be productive in a capitalist society in order to earn anything. And, and this is, a, unfortunately, a lazy generation, a generation that, that expects things. And ignorant and communist is no way to go through life. And I'm someone that believes that certainly the child, unborn child, has rights. I believe that the mother has rights. I simply happen to be a person, and some believe that those mother's rights uh, deem to uh, usurp those rights. But certainly in, it's not in, to in disrespect. What, in what world, it's not in to what world disrespect. would any of my rights allow me to kill another human being? Well, quick personal aside. Uh, I was on CNN, this would have been about six months ago, and I was on CNN to discuss Caitlyn Jenner being given the Heroism Award by ESPN, because our definition of heroism has shifted a little bit since Normandy. It's absolute nonsense, Peter. You didn't my, write that my column position in on Israel was made clear in 2013. Peter, column, and to call me answer. equivalent with people who are murdering Jews is insanity. It's beyond insulting. And if there's anybody who's emboldening Hamas to kill more children, it is you. Because it is, it is your policies which have emboldened Hamas. They know that people like you are going to get on American television oh. and talk about how the Palestinians are meek victims. And whenever they fire rockets, it can be justified by Israeli policy. Hamas All celebrates right, every All moment right, you're gentlemen. on television, that's Peter. It. We, that of black families have zero or negative wealth. White family worth, in terms of uh, financial worth, is 69 times more than that of black families. Given this disparity, how can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... And when it, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. You explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened.
And I think the reason that it's about left and right here is because fundamentally the right believes that the, the basis for the Second Amendment, and they believe in the Second Amendment, the basis for the Second Amendment is not really about self-defense and it's not about hunting. It is about resistance to government tyranny. That's what the founders said and that's what the right believes in this country. Which tyranny are you fearing yourself? Uh, I fear the possibility of a tyranny rising in this country in the next 50 to 100 years. Let me tell you something, Pierce. The fact that my grandparents and great-grandparents in Europe didn't fear that is why they are now ashes in Europe. So this, this kind of leftist revisionist history, where there's never any fear of democracy going usurpatious or tyrannical, is just that. So you're just a relationship between employer and employee, and I think this is really the root of the morality of minimum wage when it comes down to it, and in, in two sentences here, is that I would never force an employee to work for an employer at a given wage. That violates the 13th Amendment and constitutes slavery or indentured servitude. Um, by the same token, I would never force an employer to pay a given wage to an employee because that is a lack of consent on the part of the employer and violates basic principles of fairness as well as freedom. I ask you to consider, you can believe what you want, but I would ask you to consider this. Shouting institutional racism does not actually combat racism. You have to find individual instances and you have to show me who the racists are so that we can fight them together. I hate racism, I think it's evil. But if you're just gonna say institutional racism every time something bad happens, there's no way to fight it. I need a policy that you're proposing, or I need a person who's actually racist so that we can fight it together, or we can determine whether the policy is good. What I find, what I find really problematic is, is the, the virtue signaling that I see by so many people on the other side, which is, I don't have to give you the racist, I don't have to tell you who he is or what measures I'm proposing, I just say institutional racism, everybody cheers for me because that's an approved point of view, and now we move on with our lives. You haven't helped anybody, you've just made yourself feel better. Start with the, the notion of white privilege, which has become this buzzword that you hear all the time now, white privilege is responsible for everything up to and including the Kardashians, it's responsible for everything, white privilege. White privilege is a way to silence anybody who is not of color. That's what white privilege is. It is just a leftist bullshit term that means shut up because you are not a member of a minority group a privileged minority group in the leftist space. It's reverse racism of the highest order. You're basically saying to white people who aren't racist, and you can't find any proof of their racism, that they must be racist because they're white. That is called racism. If you are accusing somebody of something simply because of the color of their skin without any evidence, that's called racism, gang. Statistical disparity, and you determine that that is not a racial disparity, it's something else. Well, we can return yeah. to it. That's okay to you, Ben. Do you want to yes. play us? It's, it's called evidence of racism. When there is no evidence of racism, it's probably not racism. When there is actual evidence of racism, it's probably racism. And the fact that everybody jumps from there's inequality and therefore there is inequity, just because there's inequality does not mean there was inequity. I'm just saying that, uh, that you're going to have sexist, you're going to have racist, you're going to have all this stuff. I mean, I'm just saying that... I agree it exists, but the problem that I'm seeing, and, and this is the problem with the general conversation, is that there's no solution in simply saying there's racism out there. How does that solve anything? I mean, when, when you talk about there's institutional racism, what does that mean? Show me a law that is racist in intent, and we will agree. Show me a police officer who commits a racist act, like we saw in South Carolina, right, where a police officer shot a black man running away, and it was obviously unjustified, and I will agree. But you need... The, the, the idea that you can craft a narrative based on no racism because it just must be somewhere out there in the ether, that doesn't solve problems for anybody and creates more problems for people because now they grow up in a, in a milieu and an environment where they are told that every obstacle they face is from some shadowy, nameless, faceless group who is out to get them simply because of the color of their skin. They'll never succeed in that environment. Uh, as far as the notion that climate change is more important than terrorism or, or the economy or any of this other stuff, like, you know, this is, Paul Krugman wrote a column yesterday saying exactly this. He said, Paris is bad, but we should really keep our eye on the ball, climate change. And, and I mean, you, you, you have to be highly educated to be this stupid. Well, I mean, uh, of course one government policy leads to the next. If you raise the minimum wage, then it's going to raise the rents. When it raises the rents, you're going to have to build affordable housing. When you have to build affordable housing, you have to tax people to build the affordable housing. When you tax people to build the affordable housing, people move out of the city, and you have to raise taxes on the people who remain in the city, and this is how you hollow out the economy of a major metropolitan area in the United States. Okay, so listen, I, okay, so let me say this. I fully understand people who say they will vote for Trump just to stop Clinton. This is a position with which I totally, I, I'm fine with that position. Dennis Prager takes this position. But people who are talking up Trump or minimizing the problem Trump can be in order to arrive at this conclusion are doing themselves and everybody else a great disservice. And I think you're doing a disservice by turning people away from Trump. Well, I'm sure Trump supporters believe that. I mean, that's not a shock to me. Okay, so listen, again. You want to vote for Trump to stop Clinton. I've said, I think for the next four years, there's a good shot that Trump will be better than Clinton. 
I don't know that because nobody knows that because until five minutes ago, he didn't hold any of the policy positions he now holds, and he won't be holding them five minutes from now. Okay, Donald Trump has shifted on every major policy position of this campaign, up to and including the wall, which he now says is an opening bargaining position. Do you want Hillary Clinton as president? No, I don't. I want both of them to be cast adrift in a boat. But the fact is that the, the question in Hobby Lobby is whose freedom is being infringed upon? Employees' freedom is not infringed upon when they enter into a consensual relationship with an employer that includes certain types of health care. Not consensual. Of There's course it is. They can different. quit. Who is I mean, forcing them? Where is the gun? What? Huh? Where is the gun? Who is forcing them? Where is the chain? Who is locking them to their with the gun language. Help no, they, yeah, but no, but this is the, no, this is a, the, the reason that I use the gun language is because it is vitally important for people to understand that every government measure at the end of the day has, it, it must be compelled by force. That's what government measures are for. There is a vast difference, a huge difference in terms of personal liberty and freedom between the government compelling behavior and a company saying that we are not going to provide certain types of coverage and if you don't like that, you can quit or buy your own coverage. There's a vast difference. Well, what I do is I assume that I'm going to get a certain set of questions from, from folks like you, Brian, that I generally do get, and uh, with, with, with all the veiled implications therein. Don't you feel persecuted when you go on a leftist network? The implication, of course, being that I see myself as a victim. Don't you feel like when you come on a leftist network and you're being attacked that, that maybe it's because, you know, you're just a little bit intolerant? These are usually the way these conversations go. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad, Brian, that you haven't done all of those things. You've done some of them. But Have you guys ever met or spoken before? Uh, no, I haven't. And I, I'd like to uh, just ask Mr. Sharpton exactly why he's not paying for the Swan and Browley case and also uh, why he incited riots against Jews in Crown Heights. Oh, 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 Ben. Here's the truth. The left is more dangerous than ISIS. The reason the left is more dangerous than ISIS is because ISIS can't succeed without their appeasement and help. Right? ISIS, President Obama was wrong when he labeled them the JV team because he promptly made them the non-JV team. Right? The fact is that the left is behind the rise of ISIS. Right? It doesn't matter. They, they, they can't destroy us without the left helping them along. They, they can't. They can't without the left pretending radical Islam doesn't exist or releasing transcripts of jihadist phone calls with the religion and, the, and, and Allah omitted. Right? They can't destroy us without Obama removing troops from Iraq and slashing the military or Hillary Clinton declaring war in Libya and then, and then leaving Americans to die in Benghazi because she's a vicious pile of nastiness piled five foot seven high. Right? The fact is... That the left, if, if you're not fighting the left, you're doing it wrong. So if, if we say that ISIS is, is our worst enemy, that's not true. Leftism is our worst enemy because they're the ones who are going to allow ISIS to win. Health, health, health insurance, health insurance is an earned benefit. It's not given for free to employees. They earn it. Should your employer be able to decide how you spend your money? It is, hold up. It, earn, hold on. Earned, earn, uh, one second. Earned, for, earned from whom? Okay, I, I may think that I earn twice the salary that I get from this radio station. That doesn't mean that I have an earned benefit from the radio station for twice what they're willing to pay me. It's always a consensual so relationship. you pay for your health care? Well, first of all, I, I do because it was negotiated in the contract that I signed and which, in which I voluntarily engaged. And if I don't like that, I can quit tomorrow. Time for the right to, call the police to right fight. Right now. <laughs> no, but you read his evidence, column. Evidence, evidence, evidence. All this is is screaming and feelings. How about like a shred of evidence? It was he. He kicked off his presidential campaign by saying basically he was pitching to the to the uh, to the racists in the South. To the you know the. I don't know who I'm being asked to defend here or why I'm being asked to defend well, you, them. I'm not I, I you mean, know, the, a member the, of John McCain's staff. This is the antithesis staff. of, of I, no, this was Ronald Reagan. This is the antithesis of social justice, is, is dog whistle calls to, to, uh, to bigots, basically. But, uh, well, what does this have to do with anything that I'm talking about? Profiling. Well, everybody's a victim, right? Everybody's always a victim of profiling, whatever the circumstance, and President Obama buys into it right away, no questions asked, invites kids to the White House. And then it got a little bit awkward tonight. It was unclear whether the president was going to meet with him. He sort of met with him very briefly, didn't really meet, took a, took a photo with him in passing. And that was a bit of a downgrade from the big event, the star-studded event that we expected between the president and Ahmed Mohammed, where the president was going to knight him, give him the order of merit, uh, and also declare him the greatest scientist since Isaac Newton. Well, you will need in the next few years, it's says you will need to have weapons to take on your own government. I don't believe in the next few years.
I believe that there is always the possibility of government tyranny. I don't see that happening in the next couple of years. I do think, Pierce, I have to say, I think the reason that there are so many folks who are talking about the possibility of government tyranny is, is threefold, really. It's, it's the Obama administration's increasing reliance on big government, and that, that, I think, threatens some people. I think that it is folks like Alex Jones who do this routine where every time they shut down a city like Boston because of a terrorist attack, it's the end of the world and military laws at hand. And honestly, I think part of it is due to, to folks like you, Piers, because, you know, you go out of your way to, to really give the impression that, that you're interested in taking away people's fundamental right to bear arms, and I think that scares a lot of folks. Well, no, and, fi and the final thing is that we have to not let Democrats get away with this nonsense that we don't care about black people. We have to actually say, no, it's Democrats who clearly don't care about black people, which is why they don't give a crap when black people shoot each other in Chicago in massive numbers, and they don't give a crap when people live in South L.A. in absolute abject poverty, so long as they keep getting elected, because they're a bunch of scurrilous politicians who only care about their own paycheck.